Heel, Flame here, and today we are starting a new series on Flame This World by taking a look at Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. As you can see here from this beautiful title screen, that it just sticks the cursor dot in the middle. Don't need that, I'm playing with a controller anyway because I'm a casual. <laughs> I'm playing this on the Master Chief Collection on PC. And for some reason, the first game they released on PC wasn't the first Halo game, it was actually Reach. And I guess it makes sense in that in the game's timeline, Reach comes first. But I'm going to start with the first game, or at least the HD remaster of the first game. Let's make sure I'm on the first mission here, Pillar of Autumn. I've been doing a bit of a practice run, and that's why it put me ahead, but... You know, I I don't really play that many shooters, so I figured I should probably practice ahead of time with this. I'm going to keep the remastered visuals on and also the remastered audio, because that would be nice. Normal difficulty, I'm not going up to legendary. I don't think I'd stand a chance. As for skulls, let's see what we got here to play with. Uh, I'm not going to do anything that adjusts the gameplay too much, but we've got stuff like firing weapons faster, that's enemy shields or your shields, but you know, like, there's all kinds of different things you can do here. Non-scoring ones tend to be the, like, OP ones, <laughs> at least from Oracle. So you've got different bits and pieces like that. you got the Grunt Birthday Party one, which I'm actually going to put that on. That's the one that when you headshot a grunt, you get loads of confetti come out of them. So that's kind of a fun one. I'm not going to fuck around with anything else. <laughs> but yeah, that will do me. Let's launch the Pillar of Autumn. God, that theme is so fucking good. This is one thing I will say about Halo as a series. It's easy to overlook music in a shooter because you're paying attention to all the shit that you shoot in, obviously, but some of the music in Halo, especially the main theme and all the variants of the main theme, they're so bloody good. Cortana, all I need to know is, did we lose them? I think we both know the answer to that. <sighs> we made a blind jump. How did they... Get here first? The Covenant ships have always been faster. As for track... Yeah, I'll admit the texture work, at least on the faces in this remaster. We were they do leave a little Until bit to be desired. No could have missed the hole we tore in subspace. <laughs> like his face looks they a bit crunched in there. The it's planet. not overly offensive. It's not so horrible, but it's kind of noticeable. The last of the recon picket now. Nothing serious. But I've isolated approach signatures for multiple CCS So the way this three master works, the reasons why that happens is that essentially they've still got the models from the original game, the original Xbox game. And they've just sort of sharpened it up a bit, added new textures, but because it's limited to the old models, it's still got the old model kind of look to it. So it, it doesn't really blend in that well. I will say that the remaster visuals, they're kind of divisive. Some people really don't like these. Some people are okay with them. I'm okay with them, but I can kind of see why some people might not be. This platoon, secure airlocks on deck 11. 14th platoon, rendezvous with 22nd tactical at Bolthead Charlie 14.
You heard the lady. Move like you got a purpose. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Once again, it is our job to finish what the Flyboy started. We are leaving this ship platoon and engaging the Covenant on solid ground. When we meet the enemy, we will rip their skulls from their spines and toss them away laughing. Am I right, Marine? Sir, yes, sir! Mm-hmm. Damn right I am. Now move it out! Double time! Attention all personnel. We are re-engaging the enemy. External and internal contact imminent. All you greenhorns who wanted to see Covenant up close, this is gonna be your lucky day. Whoa. Sir? Right. Let's thaw him out. Okay. Bringing low-level systems online. Cracking the case in 30 seconds. Time to meet our man. He's hot! Blowing the pins in five! Oh yeah, here we go. Sorry for the quick thaw, Master Chief. Things are a little hectic right now. The disorientation should pass quickly. Welcome back, sir. We'll have you battle ready stat. Chief, please look around the room. I need to get a calibration reading for your battle suits diagnostics. Good. Thank you, sir. So yeah, as I said, I am playing this with a controller, so if my looking around is a little bit janky, I do apologize. No freezer burn. Okay, sir, go ahead and climb out of the cryo tube. I will say this is one thing with shooters that I have never got on with mouse keyboard controls. It's one of the things that I grew up playing Halo on console with a controller and I didn't actually get a decent PC that could play games until quite a lot later, like. So, it's just a skill I never learn. It means I'm a casual scrub, I know that. But, that's just the... Like, I'm working with what I've got, basically. That's what I'm getting at here, but... We're gonna do all the tutorial stuff here, so... I will say, going back to what I was saying about the remaster here... This... It's built on top of the original Xbox game, from everything I can tell. Like, there's probably some more specific stuff going on there. No, I don't want fucking inverted controls. It makes you test inverted controls. So, yeah, that's how I want it. Yes, leave it like this. So, up is up, down is down. Left is left, right is right. I'm ready for the energy shield test now. Please follow me to the energy shield test station. So one thing I will show off briefly in terms of this remaster is although I picked to play with the remastered visuals, if you push tab, you can just change the visuals on the fly like that. So if you're not too keen on the remastered ones after trying for a while, you can go back to Xbox visuals. Let's just have a look at this guy here. Holy shit, his face got a lot fatter. Look. <laughs> it's like he's a different fucking guy. <sighs> but yeah, I'm not going to be doing that too much because I will be sticking to the remastered visuals for the most part. I feel like a lot of the playthroughs out there probably use the classic visuals because that's what everyone grew up with. That's what everyone is familiar with. For me, I didn't actually start playing any Halo games until 3. My first Halo game was Halo 3 on the Xbox 360, I never had an original Xbox. And although I have played a fair bit of this game before, like, through the Xbox 360's backwards compatibility, it's like I don't have that nostalgia to it that a lot of people do. Halo 3, I think, looks good as it is. I don't really need any remaster for that, at least not visually. But for this game, and I guess Halo 2, I think I'll stick with the remastered visuals for now. That doesn't look too healthy, so I'm gonna get over here. I've played through this opening sequence a good handful of times, but I'm sure I'll still find a way to get lost here, because... 
Yeah, no. You got loads of corridors and everything sort of looks the same. That is one flaw that you'll notice throughout Halo Combat Evolved, much more so than the later Halo games. And that is that some of the environments are kind of samey. Maybe I should not get too close to the Elite there. <laughs> And if you could get shot real quick, because I don't have a gun. Kind of trying. <laughs> but every now and then you guys just keep getting shot in front of me and I feel like I should keep to a safe distance. Out of my way. That chanting in the background. Yeah, that, that's what I mean about the music in Halo is really fucking good. That's a Halo 1 pistol, which I'm going to try to make use of as soon as I can, because the pistol in Halo is fantastic. You gonna stare at me, mate? I don't know, something about that, I don't know whether it's like a uh, upscaling effect, but it looks like there's some weird checkerboarding on his face there, which I hadn't noticed. But... That may just be a weird graphical thing. It might actually be intentional and like they're going for some effect. I'm not entirely sure. Captain Keys. Good to see you, Master Chief. Things aren't going well. Cortana did her best, but we never really had a chance. A dozen Covenant superior battleships against a single Halcyon class cruiser. Uh, hey, it's so the Windows 10 chick. Three. Make that four kills. Sleep well? No thanks to your driving, yes. So you did miss me. Report! It must have been one of their boarding parties. I'd guess an antimatter charge. Ma'am! Fire control for the main cannon is offline! Captain, the cannon was my last offensive option. All right, then. I'm initiating cold protocol article two. We're abandoning the autumn. That means you too, Cortana. While you do what? Go down with the ship? Cortana's face is a little bit Uncanny Valley too, like, it is the faces overall that suffered the most in the remaster. I appreciate your concern, Cortana, but it's not up to me. Protocol is clear. Destruction or capture of a shipboard AI is absolutely unacceptable, and that means you're leaving ship. Lock in a selection of emergency landing zones, upload them to my neural lace, and then sort yourself for a And yeah, that's not the recording doing that. His lip sync is hilariously desynced in the game itself, too. <laughs> that's not a YouTube problem. You ain't got to worry about reloading the video or anything. If they capture her, they'll learn everything. Force deployment, weapons research. Earth. I understand. The Autumn will continue evasive maneuvers until you initiate a landing sequence. Not that you'll listen, but I'd suggest letting my subroutines handle the final approach. Excellent work, Cortana. Thank you. I know I keep ragging on the faces, but Keys there looks like he's had lip implants. <laughs> it's, it's really bad, I'm sorry. Good luck, Master Chief. Your architecture isn't much different from the Autumn's. Don't get any funny ideas. I keep bringing this up about the remastered officials. I will say that this isn't a brand new remaster. The remaster this is based on is the Combat Evolved Anniversary remaster that was on the 360. So these are Xbox 360 tier visuals. Given I'm playing this on PC, it's a little bit better than that. Like it's a little bit sharper. There's the Grunt's birthday party. But ultimately this is a 360 game just playing back at 60 FPS. Those Marines could use some help, Chief. Do what you do best. Come on. <laughs> so these enemies here, they are fucking iconic. You know, you recognise the, the elites a mile off. You recognise the grunts a mile off. Uh, I feel like out of pretty much any of the main shooter games that everyone knows, I feel like Halo has got 
the most prominent identity of its own. And that's not to knock down other games, because I quite enjoy Call of Duty. I haven't played much Battlefield, but I do actually have a couple of games that I've been meaning to get to for that as well. But I feel like this fantasy-ish look that Halo goes for, it lets them be that little bit more creative with the enemy designs, because, you know, like they're aliens, they're not trying to make them look like people, they're not trying to make them look like, you know, the Axis powers or any like actual real life soldiers. They can give the aliens cool alien weapons and <laughs> there's quite a lot of fantasy enhancements especially which you'll see a lot when we get to the vehicles. The ve vehicle gameplay in Halo is solid as well but like everyone fucking knows that. Everyone has like a favourite Halo vehicle which for me it's the ghost in later games but you know. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, while we're still doing a bit of the go place shoot guy sort of setup, my experience with Halo, I first played Halo with Halo 3, which I believe my brother got with our 360, like many, many years ago. It, it wasn't like as soon as it came out or as soon as the 360 came out, but it was kind of early on from what I recall and I played a lot of that. That was one of the first games that I remember playing online a fair bit, which I will say I really don't play online much these days. It's just, like, I don't know, I've developed more of a fondness for just playing through single player campaigns and that's just kind of my play style these days. But I did spend a lot of time on Xbox Live on the 360 with Halo 3 and I played a lot of that, at least until Modern Warfare 2 came out, and I played a lot of Modern Warfare 2 when that came out as well. And they're like the two games I remember playing online the most really, at least up until recent times. The only game I play nowadays online a lot is actually Pokemon TCG Online. So that's completely changed the tone there, but you know. Like, I have played a little bit of this remaster online. I've rediscovered the joy of hectic 4v4 slayer matches on longest which is a really tiny closed in map that when everyone's got a fucking overpowered pistol <laughs> it is absolute chaos like you will get spawn killed like 9 out of 10 times and that's not because the other guys are actually intended to do that it's just because they're walking along this tight corridor and then you just pop up in front of them and it sounds like awful design when I describe it like that but <laughs> you know it's, it's absolute chaos and I actually genuinely enjoy that a lot Halo lends itself well to unorganised chaos it's one of the things that when I used to play Halo 3 local with either my brothers or when I have friends around playing. Quite often we would just have all the forge mode tweaks on and all the custom mode, custom game mode tweaks on. So you would have like your moon jump, but like I think 300% jump on, so you jump really high and we'd have like really fast speed and one of my favorite things to have on was random weapons so each time you spawn you get a different weapon load out on the landing above us. it would be complete bullshit complete unfair sometimes you'd have one guy getting like an energy sword and the other guy would get some of the shitty covenant weapons <laughs> and like it's like the most unbalanced thing ever but I, I wasn't playing Halo for balance, I was playing Halo because it's fun just going around, driving the vehicles, shooting the shit out of each other. I don't think you can actually get an energy sword in this game actually, like you can see the enemy elites using them from time to time, but I don't think you can actually pick them up, which is a shame. I think that was Halo 2 that came in, but don't quote me on that. You definitely can in free and in reach. Help. 
Um, that's another thing, like, back in the day, I don't think I actually beat any of the Halo campaigns. Um, particularly with Halo 3, I actually always wanted to play the campaign of that. But if you remember the Xbox 360, it had this odd quirk that sometimes... Oh, fuck, I didn't see that guy. Sometimes, for no apparent reason, it would just chew up a disc. And it did that to my Halo 3 disc. At least the first one I had back in the day. And you could still play in the multiplayer just fine on it. But there was this one mission that it just wouldn't load in the campaign. And I never got around to replacing that until years later. So I never finished the Halo 3 campaign as much as I wanted to, which is kind of a shame. The Covenant are destroying the light pods. Warning, blast doors closing. We had to use the ship's maintenance access ways. Follow the nav point, it will lead you to a Because I don't really talk about the series that much on the channel or any of my videos, I mean really. But I do actually have a massive soft spot for Halo. Even if I do suck dick at shooters a lot of the time. Like I'm doing alright here because it's the first level. This is gonna go complete tits up when I get actually into the game a little bit. Detecting covenant movement outside the access ways. Activating Please tell me I haven't just gone in a circle. No, I haven't. That's good. <laughs> that wasn't the smoothest door opening animation, but I'll take it. Wait. We need to get through that door, but it's been damaged by an explosion. Was that the tutorial for the door that I just busted open without thinking? I think it might have been actually. I don't think it was expecting me to know to do that. <laughs> Okay, they're fucking everywhere. But yeah, I'll, I'll never beat any of the Halo campaigns back in the day. I did actually beat Reach finally when I first like I, when I first downloaded this PC collection. That was the only one that was available at the time. So I thought, you know what, I am in the mood for some Halo. So I played through that. I did me practice runs, and then I. Recorded day long play of that for FC playthroughs, and so I got that experience. Like the There's the bay where I woke up, and no, I can't break through, but he can see me. Which may be not the best thing. This is what I mean about the pistol. Look how far the reach is on that. <laughs> this is so silly. <laughs> this one's birthday party. <laughs> it's one of them jokes that uh, it, it doesn't stop being funny, even though it absolutely should. Let's go through here. I think this is where I'm meant to go. Okay, so I'm going by the logic that if I see some guys who aren't dead, it's probably a new place I haven't been yet. And that seems to be serving me well so far. I hear noises, I hear things constantly blowing up, which that's usually another sign that I need to listen out for. I swear I headshot that motherfucker. This is another thing that's really cool. It's a very subtle thing. But once you've done a melee attack and you do this really cool animation where you throw the pistol back round, <laughs> it's just so satisfying. And the sound direction too, in that it, it just... The audio in this game is very high quality. They're not quite as high quality as some of the releases of this game. I know that was one of the slight downgrades that Digital Foundry pointed out about this remaster in that they used the audio track from the original PC game to my understanding, which I do actually have a copy of, but you know, why would I play that when I have the fancy remaster that runs a little bit smoother? Okay, this is teaching me to use grenades. Let's sort that out. There we go. Grenades in Halo work decently, the frag grenades at least. I do find it much more satisfying when you get the sticky grenades you can use. 
No, I haven't got any yet, so that will come later, I imagine. I am sort of pushing my luck a little bit with these melee attacks. It's not the most reliable technique if you're in front of the guy. If you're behind him, then you can normally just do a one-hit kill, and that's like the most reliable way of taking a guy out. But if you're in front of him and you're just spraying and praying, then really <laughs> it's, it's not that smart of a decision to just keep on wailing the melee attack. I don't have any information on the voice actors to hand, but I do really like the voice acting in this game. It's overplayed military schlock, but it's perfect for Halo. We'll be fine. If I still had fingers, they'd be crossed. So up next is a chapter that is literally just called Halo. Like usually when you get a chapter that's just named after the game, it's normally the fast. ending, possibly the opening, but Damn, for this one, I guess Bungie just wanted to be a little bit subversive, a little bit different, so I just thought, fuck it, chapter two. <laughs> uh, but this doesn't look like it ended up too well for our guys. Let's have a little look when we Chief, get control. At last. Are you all right? Here we go. Can you move? How are these guys doing? Uh, not too great by the look of it. <laughs> oh god, that's a little bit morbid, I will admit. But, you know. Morning. It's a game about I shooting people. I get to be a little bit fucked up. I recommend moving into those hills. If we're lucky, the Covenant will believe that everyone aboard this lifeboat died in a crash. Alert! Covenant dropship inbound. They must be looking for survivors. I recommend immediate evasion. So what they kind of want you to do here is to be a little bit stealthy. And that's never really been a strong suit of mine, I will say. So I'll give it a half-hearted try. But emphasis on the half-hearted. The, the fucking Banshees already caught me cool. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my attempt at stealth is over now. <laughs> Go back to just doing my usual thing. I do like the Banshees as vehicles, though. They're the vehicle that kind of gave Halo its aerial element. Which, compared to like the earlier Call of Duty games, for example, like a lot of those were not completely flat. Like the level design was designed in a way that you could still have a guy camping out up in a building somewhere, but all the weapon use from the air was just like preset air strikes. Whereas Halo, it put you in control of the aerial weapons, and that just gave it an extra dynamic. It kind of, at least Halo 2 and Halo 3. I mostly played Halo 3 online back in the day, but I do remember playing on some of the Halo 2 maps. Because like, I never had an original Xbox, so I got a 360 and then played some of the earlier games, the original Xbox games, through the backwards compatibility. And I do remember that there was this thing that you got some sort of uh, flare you could unlock in Reach if you'd played Halo 2 online on the Xbox or Xbox 360. I think there was this, a special one. It was either for having played it in general or having played it on the last day the original Xbox servers were up. So I remember there was a bit of a fuss about a load of people wanted to make sure they got this particular flare thing. I think it was like a little icon that showed up next to your name when you play online in Reach. 
God, that was forever ago now. <laughs> I think it... I want to say... When was it they turned off the service for Halo 2? I think it was like either 2011, 2012, maybe. That was a kind of a weird one for me because I came into it at the time where I realised there was cultural significance of Halo 2 on the original Xbox. But I hadn't really experienced it much myself. I just, like I say, occasionally played a bit of Halo 2 and that was it. Uh, I do remember this was back when they actually managed to successfully convince me to pay for Xbox Live. I stopped doing that quite a while ago now. <laughs> uh, I, I will say I've never been a fan of paid online. I sort of gritted my teeth at it when it was on the 360, but I wanted to play Halo and that was my only option at the time. But nowadays it's fucking unacceptable. Uh, and it it really fucking sucks now our like Microsoft used to be the outliers they used to be the ones that we would get pissed off at because they would charge for online gameplay where Sony and Nintendo wouldn't Look sharp. Covenant dropship on approach I could use some help over here Can't hide from me. I see him. but Nowadays, both of them have kind of started doing that too. Like Sony, they charge for PlayStation Plus. Let's find him. Nintendo, although their their service isn't as expensive as the Sony and Microsoft ones, it's still something extra you've got to pay for. And they haven't really improved their services to justify paying for it. So, yeah, I really wish that wasn't a thing. It's like holding certain online games hostage behind a secondary paywall. You gotta pay for the game and then you gotta pay separately to be able to play online against other people with it. And that's not just me being stingy there, that's like it's only consumer in itself, but it also kinda of devalues a lot of their games. For someone like me who doesn't really play online that much, just occasionally, just casually here and there. Like, I, I can, I can't really justify paying to occasionally play Call of Duty online. That's, like, I have a lot of the Call of Duty games on PS4, but if I want to play it online, I'm going to have to pay a subscription, and I don't want to do that. I don't play enough to justify it. And I sort of caved in on the Nintendo one because I know a handful of people who wanted to play like Mario Kart and Smash and whatnot. But even then, it kind of shoots down the casual, I'll just play for a little bit sort of thing. And when Nintendo have got a good handful of games that sort of revolve around that now, like Splatoon and Smash and Mario Kart, and you know, like it, it kind of it makes it less of an impulse buy. Does that make sense? It's like, Nintendo games are expensive enough as it is. They never reduce the fucking prices, but if you want to play a particular game online, then it's the initial point of entry, and then the subscription fee, which I think is like 20 quid a year, something like that. I think the Sony and Microsoft ones are 40. But yeah, that's something that I don't see myself coming around on. I think that's really shitty. Even if it is cheaper than the other ones, it's still shitty. <laughs> uh, this is why I'm glad that I mostly play on PC now, because with Halo, with the Master Chief Collection here, I can just jump in occasionally for the odd game, and that is something that... I wish I'd got into PC gaming a lot sooner. I used to play exclusively on console and that was mainly because I kind of never had great PCs for playing games growing up. I had laptops that weren't that great as a kid and then the first decent computer I got, the first one that wasn't 
and a cheap piece of shit was a Mac. And, like, nothing plays on Mac, at least not well. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is where we're gonna get Look, our first ride coming in. If those lifeboats make it down, there we go. I see the warthog. Hammer, we need you to disengage your warthog. The master chief and I are going to see if we can save some Yeah, like PC gaming is just such a more satisfying experience. Like I'm playing this right now, and yeah, this is a 360 tier game that's just been upscaled. Or if we do that. Just an Xbox game that's been upscaled. <laughs> Am I trapped? No, I'm not. Cool. <laughs> I thought I've trapped myself inside the Pelican there, but no, like, although it is just that, it is nice to have it running at a smooth frame rate because I, I remember the original release of this remaster on the 360, and I seem to recall that had some performance issues. I think it was at capped at 35. Oh, I may be wrong about that. It's been a long time. Someone built it, so it must lead somewhere. I've hacked I think the whole being on. able to switch the graphics on the fly thing does cost quite a bit in terms of performance. I, I'm playing this on a GTX 1070, so not a super high quality, up to date graphics card, but it's still pretty good. But you know. So can I get across here? Yes, I can. Sorry. I think the last couple of times I've attempted this, because this is like my third take of playing through this level, I did fuck that up a couple of times. There is one of the little... I forget what they're called. The little things that play a video when you find them down there somewhere. I'm not going out of my way for those. If I find them, cool. If I don't, I don't. I think all that you really get, aside from the little videos, is an achievement. So I'm not that worried about it. But if I keep on doing this, then I'll let my guys do all the work. And then, have I killed all of them yet? I think I might have. Okay, so now I need to actually do some shit. But yeah, this is like my third take of this level, because the first two takes I kind of made a few mistakes. I remember that guy. <laughs> I remember he was here. <laughs> and I got him. I made a few mistakes in my first couple of takes that I just didn't really want to settle with. Like, it, it was to the point where it was sort of putting me off in my commentary and stuff. I thought it'd just be better if I just start again. But now I can do this and I can draw the bridge out and see the cool graphical effect they got going on because this bridge, I seem to remember it looking a little bit shit in the Xbox One. But here, God, look at that glow. It's so satisfying. It shouldn't be, it's a very simple effect, but it's so satisfying. Now, where did I park that warthog? This looks like it could be a fun little platforming segment there if it were that low roof, but hey. There it is. <laughs> I was worried that I'd lost it then, because I, I will admit up front that that is a mistake I have made several times before, that I just dump the warthog somewhere where it's not that easy to retrieve it, and then got myself stuck between rocks or something. Let me just show off the difference here in this bridge. That's better than I remember it. Like, I remember it being not quite so see-through, but yeah, I guess they managed to make it work on like both versions of it. As far as I recall there's nothing around here so I can just keep on going. There's new traffic on the Covenant Battle Network. A lot more crew made it off the autumn than I had predicted. The captain really gave them hell. 
If we can find Captain Keyes and the other survivors, we have a chance to coordinate an effective resistance. Oh, how good to this door! <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny, because it's... One thing that I will say about the vehicles in Halo is... Uh, it's one of the more iconic parts of the franchise. It's like everyone has a favourite Halo vehicle. For me, it's the Ghost, but the Warthog's plenty of fun in the same, right? But the way the vehicles control is you hold forward on the analog stick and you just use the camera to control your direction. So, like, I'm just holding forward there, but if I spin the camera around, then I drive in circles. And that might not sound like the smoothest thing, but it just works. A lot of games will just give you an accelerate button, uh, usually either the A button or the trigger, whatever works. But for this, now you just hold forward and it goes. Now, this particular section, there's a few different paths that you can go, and I believe we've got to go through all of them. So, let's do that, and hopefully I won't die too much. They can keep fighting in the hills above the structure because I've got some ground level jackals to do a terrible job of aiming at. <laughs> and some grunts. This is one thing I can say about the way these enemies react to the cars. That was close, I nearly got sticky there. <laughs> but they will actively try to move out of the way. Like, you can splatter them, that is a pretty satisfying way of killing them but at least the jackals and the elites not so much the grunts but they will try to <laughs> never mind what I'm saying I'm just gonna kill myself I'm just gonna kill myself with my own fucking car <laughs> but yeah they'll like there you saw him dive out of the way there they will try to do that to varying degrees of success, sometimes they can dodge, sometimes they can't. It only depends whether I'm in the right place to splatter them. Splattering in a warthog's cool, but when we get a ghost later on, that's when it will be really satisfying. More so in the sequels than Halo 1, but it's still kind of fun here. Oh, you fucker. Let's get out and do some of the shooting myself. I've been relying on these lot far too much. And maybe wasting all the good ammo wasn't that smart. <laughs> but, eh. I, I do thankfully have a little supply of other weapons here. I seem to recall the Needler being quite useful in this game more so than other games like I don't really remember getting much use from it in Reach but that may be me misremembering let's see so I know we have some guys waiting for us higher up but I don't know if I've cleared out all the ground level enemies first so let's see how this plays out for us there's our guys I'm not going to kill you, mate. I know it looked like I was going to run you over, but what's he doing? <laughs> oh, he's getting in. Cool. <laughs> this guy's terrified of me. Look at him. Okay, so I think we're going to get another dropship. Yeah, over there landing. Cool. Right, I can actually go and have a proper battle now. Okay, there's plenty of things to splatter here. <laughs> this is what I like. Except for when they have needlers. And I'm seeing Elite. I want to get rid of him because he's going to be the problem. This guy's not even having to try to dodge me, I will admit. My donuts in the Warthog, they're not the greatest. We read you, Echo 419. We have survivors and need immediate dust off. Roger, Cortana. On my way. I spotted additional lifeboats in your area. 
one near a rock slide, and another near the cliff edge. Hard to see from my altitude, but it looks like there are more survivors. Acknowledged. We're on our way. Right, so now we're going to have to go back over to the other side. This particular level, it's a little bit more open than, say, the Pillar of Autumn that we were on last time. It's not really saying much, but Halo, on the whole, like from everything I remember from the, the different campaign modes, it is quite linear, but in a way that it doesn't feel too handholdy linear, it's very much kind of it guides you and the levels are built in a way that they don't feel like a corridor or anything. But you can't really get lost too easily either. Maybe they took cover in that structure. Let's check it out. Well I say you can't get lost too easily, but there are some base levels later on in the game where everything starts looking the same. When we're in the outside areas like this, which let's let's have a little look at the scenery here. Like that for a 360 era upscaled Xbox game. It's kinda pretty. Now this did look pretty good on the original Xbox by original Xbox standards, especially given it was quite early. And then Halo 2 went above and beyond with that. Having this cleaned up version, it, it looks different. I'll say that much. Like uh, Some people will absolutely defend the original version and they don't particularly like the remastered visuals, which I do understand. It's not for everyone. There's a completely different mood to it. And if you're not too fond on the different atmosphere that you get in this version of the game, I absolutely get that. Just for me, I can kind of go either way. Oh shit. <laughs> I'm going to try not to slide off here. But I feel like the difference in atmosphere is kind of hard to pinpoint what it is that causes it, but I feel like it's the traditional deal of the more simple a game or drawings or like any kind of piece of, piece of media, the more simple the art style, the more your brain kind of fills in the blanks and the more is left to your imagination. Whereas when it's more detailed like this, you lose that mystique a little bit. So it's still good, still looks great, but it just, like, it, it spells out the world that bit more for you. Now, if I recall correctly, there's a tunnel we've got to go down here, and I think you can get in at either end. But I am up here now, so let's try and find the opening and hopefully not get myself lost. If I park the car here, near that exit, <laughs> just remember it's behind the rock. <laughs> Ignore all these other rocks, it's behind this particular rock. <laughs> But yeah, there's an opening somewhere around here that I can get into and then there's another batch of enemies that I need to take out underground. I didn't work out too well for you guys. Maybe I should get this health. There we go. Yeah, they never saw me coming. So yeah, that's pretty much the needless deal. The needles sort of home in. It's not a completely reliable homing shot that you can just sort of shoot around walls and shit, but it's pretty useful on the whole. I forgot that their shields deflect the plasma grenades, so that's my bad. What was that? Oh, that was the weapon there. <laughs> I just saw a massive glow and was wondering what the fuck was going on. Up this end... I believe those guys have already taken out the enemies because they're evac came. Oh, or maybe not. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, they've missed quite a handful of guys here, so I don't 
think I need to take this out because the evac's already been called. But if I can shoot some more bastards, I will shoot some more bastards. It's kind of my deal here. Just watch this backfire on me and I'll get killed. <laughs> I love the way they run at you when they get stickied, but I also hate it because they run at you when they get stickied. Because <laughs> they absolutely can kill you by doing that. They absolutely can become a martyr for their cause just by legging it towards you once they know they're going to die, which I respect, you know, like if you're going to take someone, if you're going to be taken out, you might as well take out your enemy with you. But it kind of gets bloody annoying. Yeah, I keep finding the AR ammo, but I kind of also want the pistol, because the pistol's better than either the AR or the needler. But I think that was my cue to... Oh, well actually, I've got to wait for this pelican to come down first, but this is my cue that I've cleaned out this particular area, so let's let the other guys get to safety. And you can come with me, cool. I saw the checkpoint done icon so I can move. <laughs> For a game that I think this is rated 16 by Peggy, either 16 or 18. For a game with that kind of intended audience, I did get a lot of childlike wonder from just driving around on the Warthog. <laughs> and I probably shouldn't, that's probably not the appeal they're going for, but even through my childhood, and yes, I I did play games that were intended for teenage and adults when I was too young, but I don't know, I managed to go my whole adolescence without, you know, committing any actual acts of violence, so didn't fuck me up. <laughs> Let's see, can I make it down here? Yes, I can. I, I thought that was a big cliff then, and I was getting a little bit concerned, but I made it. It might have been a little bit of texture popping on that rock just then. Maybe. <laughs> that guy singing along in excitement like I was a minute ago. Okay, maybe they were intending you to get this kind of enjoyment out of it. <laughs> like, just look at the art style, like the realistic soldiers, and then put that with the almost ragdoll-ish physics on the Warthog. It shouldn't go together this well. It just really does. <laughs> I needed this right now. This is kind of dumb fun. Am I going the wrong way? I might be going the wrong way. Yeah, I'm going the way I came. I think. Last lifeboat is in the mountains near a rock slide. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so maybe I should actually follow the little marker that's on screen. <laughs> oh, God. I'm in too good of a mood right now for that to bother me. <laughs> it's one thing I will say that uh, there's something about certain LPs that I get really anal about that I just want to be like as close to perfect gameplay as I can get, as close to perfect commentary as I can get. And then there's other games where I've got a Warthog just flying around all over the place and I'm driving in the complete wrong direction, but... You know what? I don't even care. <laughs> I'm having fun. I will say, these are look at videos and... Yeah, I really couldn't come up with any title better than that, but... That was the working title, that's what we're rolling with now. But these are look at videos that are probably going to be a lot more casual than when I do full Let's Plays. It's like the thing is with Let's Plays, I'm always sort of under this mindset of like, I need to show off the game to... I need to show off the game in full and people are going to be using it as like a walkthrough or a guide. And so if I waste people's time by not playing it perfectly then that's a problem whereas when i'm just sort of doing these looser impressions videos not necessarily first impressions obviously i've mentioned i've played halo before but you know i, I can sort of cut myself a little bit of slack 
I'm obviously still gonna try and make it as entertaining as I can and if it went really badly then yeah I would start cutting things around and taking things out as appropriate but I don't need to be quite as heavy-handed with that as I am with let's plays but again like this is a new format and I'm playing it by ear so if you do have any kind of input any kind of feedback on this video any other videos like it that go up please do feel free to let me know what you think where the fuck was I meant to be going I can't remember oh there's our uh, next thing I can't look up let's have a look up properly Okay, that's an enemy. Let's get back in the fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> but on the topic of feedback, I am very interested in what people think of new stuff I bring into the channel like this. I'll be first to admit that I don't always have the healthiest approach to making videos, and I got into a very, I guess safe but also self-destructive mindset toward videos where everything had to be a full let's play it would usually have to be pre-recorded and I'd have to do a lot of cleanup on the commentary afterward and that sounds great on paper and whatnot but also I am very busy I'm very busy keeping up a daily schedule on my FC playthroughs channel and the thing with Let's Plays is that while they're easy to make content, relatively speaking, they're also very time consuming. Because like, it's not just a case of the time it takes to play the whole game, but it's also that again in editing and whatnot. And then if I'm not happy with that, when all is said and done, then again my old self-destructive mindset says toss it. <laughs> and you can probably imagine that that's not, it's not a good way to remain productive. You don't exactly put out that much output when you're in this sort of mindset. So I'm kind of, I'm at a point in my life now where I'm creeping closer and closer to 30. I don't have all the time in the world to put out the perfect polished LPs anymore, as you can kind of tell by the slow upload schedule. But I do want to just have the fun of creating things. So <laughs> if I have to have a bit of a compromise, I do unfortunately have to have a bit of a compromise. And I can also look at the glass half full approach to this as well because now I'm not committing myself to having to fill an entire playthrough's worth of commentary I can cover games that I otherwise wouldn't be able to like I, I don't think I would have a full halo commentary in me for the sake of full disclosure I just I don't I like the games but I don't necessarily have about six hours worth of commentary for each of the games. I still want to show them off, I still want to bring them to the channel and this is kind of a good workaround. And while I'm not committed to doing these one-off videos for every entry in the series, it is also something that could happen over time. So I just sort of dip my toes into a little bit of each of them so I can look at like the immediate gameplay changes and we can also do a bit more of like the visual comparisons that I was sort of getting at earlier because like this game looks pretty nice Halo 2 Anniversary looks really nice and then again Halo 3 was on the Xbox 360 by then so by that point they kind of got they got rid of the 6th gen jank <laughs> 
I don't use that as a derogatory thing, by the way. I do like how a lot of 6th gen games look and feel, but I also am realistic. I realise that it's not going to be to everyone's taste, and a lot of those games, they looked fine on the CRT, but you blow them up to your TV screen or your like big 24-inch monitor, most people have bigger monitors than that, but mine's about 24 inch. And it just looks a bit shit. Like, a lot of them games look a bit muddy, which is incredibly unfortunate. But also, remasters exist for a reason. But yeah, like, I, I'm saying, I can, I can afford to be a bit more flexible with this format. There's some other games that I would like to cover at some point in this format. Probably doing samplers on some RPGs. Maybe some more shooters, maybe some more action games that I just don't have the skill to show off well otherwise. We'll see. The proof and reconciliation touched down on a desert plateau roughly 300 kilometers up spin. There's our ride. Get aboard and let's get out of here. Welcome aboard, Master Chief. I think that will do it for this video. We've played through the first two chapters of Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. And again, if you'd like to play this game for yourself, it is available on the Halo Master Chief Collection that's on both PC and Xbox. I've been the Flameclaw, and I'll see you next time for another video. Bye-bye for now.